Hey Beachbody champions. Um, I'm just going to make sure I'm in the right place. Looks like I am. Um, my name is Megan Pope and I am jumping on with you today. Sydney, oh, sorry, Sydney asked me to hop in here and share with you guys some of my 2017 uh, goal setting tips and kind of walk through what I'm doing. Maybe something I'm doing will um, resonate with you or will be something that you haven't thought about, you know, in this way and uh, it'll help. So let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Megan Pope. I am um, a newly elite coach. I've been a coach for just about two years now. Um, and as you can imagine with us hitting elite for the first time, uh, my team is super excited at the moment. Um, uh, we are team top knot. And um, there's just so much positive momentum at the moment that it's a really great time to harness that energy and that momentum and get really focused about what we want to see happen in 2017. So whether whatever kind of year you had in 2016, you know, there's always energy and new beginnings and a new start. So wherever you are as a team, I would totally recommend um, connecting and talking about it. That is an area that I didn't um, do such a good job at in 2016, sharing my vision and talking to my team about my goals and, and what I was working towards. And it didn't happen until after some, and I can't um, recall exactly what speaker shared this at some. It was probably uh, several, that, several different talks throughout those days, but just talking about the importance of goal setting and sharing your vision with your team. And I hadn't been doing any of that because, you know, in some ways pushing for elite can feel like um, you know a solo trip and a solo goal that's how I was thinking about it so I didn't know how to go to them and say this is what I want us to work towards and you know when I heard people continually talking about that elite is a we thing and not a me thing um, I realized like how could I how could I lead a team of people to do this if they have no idea that that's what um, I'm working towards. So it wasn't about August that I started getting really comfortable with sharing my vision with the team and, and talking to them about what their vision were and um, you know individually and then as a team what we want to stand for and what do we what we want to work for and uh, making sure that we are really all on the same page. So I think that, you know, moving forward from 2016, something that I will always try to be more cognizant of is the act of goal setting with a group of people, you know, um, and making sure that it's not just something that I'm doing in my office and writing down in my notebook. I wasn't even really telling my husband um, what I was working towards. You know, I don't know if I was scared or if it sounded silly to sound, say out loud. I'm sure that's a big part of it right now as I'm goal setting for 2017. Some of the stuff I'm scared to say it out loud. Um, and I'm, but I made myself tell him the other night and I made myself tell our team the other day, like, these are my personal goals for 2017. Um, this is what I would like to see happen for our team. What do you guys want to see happen individually and on a team level? So having that discourse and that dialogue is so important and it made everybody really um, feel a part of it and we are celebrating this as a team for sure. Like they, I, this, it wouldn't have happened without everyone's effort and input and being able to do that together has been huge. So moving into 2017, definitely one of my first tips is, um, that communication factor with you and your team about what you want your goals to be. And then for your personal goals, communicating what those are to somebody that can hold you accountable, whether it's within your team page or a success partner um, or upline coach, you should probably be telling all of those people, but also sometimes somebody outside of the business that's really close to you that can help support you. Um, it makes a huge difference. Even if even if you don't feel like you have a really supportive person that understands this business, um, and I think that's what I was kind of doing sometimes to my husband, like, well, he doesn't really get what elite means, so what does it matter if I tell him? Um, I just started to talk to him about it, and uh, he definitely helped me um, those last few weeks of the year, and uh, like I said, telling him this year what I'm working towards has already been... Um, scary and freeing and made it real. So number one tip is that is just the communication factor with goal setting. Uh, the next thing that I am really utilizing uh, to help 
navigate my process and my plan to hitting some of those goals is using some sort of business activity tracker. Now I'm sure like me, you have been introduced to several electronic. Um, I am your stereotypical pen and paper gal and I kept using that as a reason as to why I could not do something electronic. But I have finally, I hope, I mean I've only been using it for a couple weeks, but found kind of a method that blends both worlds. I made a fairly simple uh, business activity tracker on Excel that's really specific to me. I looked at a bunch of different ones and needed to find a way that I could streamline my power hours so that I don't get distracted and so that, you know, I, I work full time, I have four kids. Um, Time is of the essence and I know, especially when I'm not really organized, that I can lose so much time scrolling and I enjoy reading other coaches' pages and feeds and my challengers' pages and my challenge groups and before you know it, I've lost 30 minutes doing that and I just don't have enough time for that. So I made a really simple business activity tracker on Excel um, that's very specific about what I need to be doing each day. I did it for the month, so um, I have my activities on the left, I have on on the, on the columns, you know, the days of the week and the date, and at the end of the day, I'm making a note in my journal to make sure that it's updated. It's a non-negotiable for bed, uh, for the month of January and then I'll kind of see how it worked. Um, along with that, I still have a notebook that I am writing a lot of um, the names of people that I'm talking to, my check-ins, my coach invites, my challenger invites. Maybe that's a lot of extra work. For me, it works. The point is using some sort of tracking method that works for you. Don't feel like you have to do what your upline's doing or what you've seen shared in your team page. And I think that's what I kept trying to do. I kept trying to use things that were shared with me instead of figuring out like what is going to get me to hit my um, success club goal or to hit my recruiting goal for the month. How many conversations do I need to be having? How many invitations do I need to be make sure that I'm doing? How many new conversations do I need to be doing? How many times do I want to post today? So I just created this, this tracker. It's working for me. Whatever it is for you, track your activity. It's going to make a big difference. And being able to go back and hold yourself accountable when you feel like you're inviting all the time and you look like, well, I actually only invited two people in the last 15 days. There's a disconnect there because sometimes we feel like we're doing things. We're putting so much energy into worrying about the wording and worrying about what's going to happen that we're less productive than we actually feel like we are. So track it. Um, Find a success partner, okay? And I, I find an accountability partner. I don't love the term success partner because I think that sometimes um, it can be misconstrued a little bit. I have had the, the absolute joy of getting to work with multiple accountability partners throughout my time as a coach. You know, initially my upline coach and I did a lot together. Um, I also reach out to people within our larger team that, you know, their posts and their words resonated with me, the things they were posting in the team page. And I would just introduce myself and say, hey, I'm Megan. Um, I'm a newer coach. I love the way that you talk about Shakeology. It always seems so natural. Um, would you mind if I, like, ask you questions from time to time? It seems maybe a little bit um, strange at first to do that, um, but it's a great way to, like, pick other people's brain. And we always learn. I learn learn so much from connecting with others and from forming relationships. So uh, if you're not doing that, um, do it. Get comfortable asking somebody if you can brainstorm with them or if you can share messages, if you guys might want to design you know, a template together for a challenge group or what free groups have been working for them. How do they answer questions about psychology? What are you doing that's work? It's got to be a reciprocal conversation that you're offering, you know, a value to them in return, but, you know, be in charge of, of how you learn in this space. It doesn't just have to be the information that is handed to you. You can do so much on your own. And for me, so much of that has come from developing different accountability partners and relationships, um, you know, within, like I said, within coaches, within, you know, Beachbody, whomever it is, I would definitely recommend doing that. And then keep asked to, to keep each other accountable. It's really important that you give someone permission 
to hold you accountable, right? Sometimes we want an accountability partner, but we don't have to answer to anybody. Um, you know, if, when, if or when they say, hey, I haven't seen your tracker lately, and you're like, well, I haven't had time. You can't do that. You've got to have somebody that you're going to be able to, when they call you to the table, be able to say, you know what, I haven't been doing it, or thank you for calling me, um, calling this to my attention. I really need to get back on it. But um, having those individual relationships, um, even though we have such a great community of coaches all around us has been incredibly meaningful to me and really helps with with goal setting and then my last tip is think of the time frame in which you are goal setting so last year I pretty much made a by summit goal and then by end of year goal but they were fairly haphazard you know I decided I wanted to be two star by summit and then after summit I decided I wanted to be a five star um, elite coach by the end of the year when I think back to the amount of hustle and effort and focus that happened from end of September through December it is mind-boggling to me and to the and to my team you know we accomplished so much in such a short time what were we doing the other months like I don't I don't really know why we didn't do that if you haven't read the 12 week year I know it's getting a lot of buzz right now I would totally recommend reading that but the way that I've set my goals for 2017 are, are pretty clear cut. I'm doing monthly goals. I'm doing 90 day goals. So what I want to see happen in the next 12 weeks, I am doing a six month slash summit goal. And then I'm doing a year goal. So each month I'll reevaluate what happened the month before and reset my goals for the next month. Over the course of 90 days, what I want to see happen in this first quarter. Um, and I put Sorry, I kind of lost you there for a second. Um, I put, you know, my personal health and fitness goals and my business goals. I think that that's really important. If you don't have your personal health and fitness goals on there and your PD on there, they have to be on there. Like know what book you're reading each month or know what program you're doing and that Shakeology is part of it. Shakeology, personal development, and um, what program I'm doing are on this monthly business tracker that I mentioned. But you should have a have an idea of exactly what you want to accomplish each month, what you want to see happen in the next 90 days, what you want to see happen by summit, what you want to see happen by the end of the year, and then obviously resetting your monthly and your quarterly goals as needed. Um, I think when we, somebody said recently, it was so great, when there's no sense of urgency, we have no focus, and when we have no focus, we fall back into our comfort zone, and gosh, that spoke to me so much, because I see it happen in every aspect of my life, not just in the coaching aspect, but, you know, if you're not on a program, and you're just kind of haphazardly doing things, you don't have the same intensity, and the same focus, and the same drive to crank it out, and to be on top of it with your nutrition, you kind of like are in this, like, comfortable land and you're not you're not attacking things the same way it's the exact same thing when you're not actively reading a book when you are just listening to training calls and listening to webinars and you're you're chalking that up as your PD not that that's not important and should be part of PD but the act of starting and finishing a book even if you don't like it um, is really important so keeping those things on your monthly goals um, I think is, is really important um, so those are my tips uh, sharing your vision, communicating your vision with your team um, and with somebody that can help you stay accountable. Um, having success or accountability partners, uh, sharing a timeline um, or thinking through a timeline of the of the manner in which you want to meet your goals that has some short term components to it. And I feel like I missed something that I said. Oh, and having a business activity tracker. Tracking your actions, tracking your activity. Um, all of these things can take some time getting used to. Give it a try, right? That's the I have never used a business activity tracker with this amount of specificity until this month. Uh, Ten days into the month, it is already helping me tremendously. And I'm thinking, why didn't I do this sooner when people told me to? So whatever, whatever that looks like, I would definitely recommend doing it. All right, thanks for letting me chat. Um, hope this was helpful. See ya.